Good, Good morning. morning. I'm Coretta. I'm Michaela. And I'm Nora. And welcome to Trinity Orange Church Online. We're so glad that you can join us for today. Please look at our website at www.thchurch.com for more information about our ministries, online giving, and more. It's a great resource to help you stay connected and learn anything you need to know. We invite you tonight for our driving worship at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to our website. We are here for you and we hope that we can stay connected with you during this difficult time. If you or anyone you know needs any assistance, feel free to contact our pastors or elders and click contact us on our website. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful morning of worship and we hope to see you tonight. Bye. Bye.
We're going to move into no longer slaves. You can stand or sit or whatever you feel led to do.
Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Alliance Church Online. Back in March, when we first started this, and we, we went online, we thought this was only going to be for a month or so. This has continued to drag on and to drag on, and I know a lot of you are getting, are getting tired. Getting tired of not being together, getting tired of not uh, being able to see one another and, and sharpen one another. So I ask that you be very, very intentional especially this week and in the next couple weeks to come. As the numbers are starting to rise and some of the states around us are starting to go backwards in their plans, we, we are going to stick with the plan that we've had. We are going to continue to record. Uh, in the next few weeks, it's going to be a live stream recording, so it's going to look a little different, but nothing else is going to change. People are afraid that we're going to change things and you're not going to be able to get on. You will. Nothing's going to change just how it looks because it's going to be filmed live instead of recorded and, and taken uh, time to edit. So, so just bear with us as we, as we stick with that. Our goal is that you spend time uh, watching this together in small groups. We call them hub churches. And uh, we ask that you join a hub group and, uh, and, and dive into relationships with one another. We really want to deepen those relationships before, uh, before we, can, we can pull back all the way in and all come back together. So we're still waiting for them to be able to open enough room inside for us to be able to meet all together. So keep praying with us. Keep praying for our nation. And most of all, be very intentional about your relationships. Please, do not wait around for somebody to call you. Please call and encourage one another. This morning, this message is hopefully an encouragement to you. And uh, as we're going to be talking about how God encourages us, uh, I want you to be able to reach out and encourage one another. You'll see why in, in just a little bit. But before we begin, let me pray. And let's invite God into our time together we don't want this just to be another time where we, we sit down, we check this off and, and call it a day. I really want God to speak to me, and I want God to speak to you. Our God loves us, and He doesn't want to leave us in a place where we are. He wants us to continually grow closer to Him. So let's pray and invite Him here today. Father, you love your children so desperately. It is so evident. And Lord, as so many of us are, are just tired of this quarantine, we, we're tired from the heat, we're tired from all that's going on, we want to complain about everything, but then when we sit and we see you, Father, you, ref you refresh our souls, you restore us, and you lift us up. And Lord, I ask that that's what you do this morning, that Lord, as a deer pants for water, Lord, our souls would pant after you. God, I thank you for your word Open it up to us. Holy Spirit, if you're not here, if you are not in our midst and, and not showing us the word, then we'll, we won't get anything. We won't learn and we won't grow. And we won't draw closer to the Father. So Holy Spirit, we invite you here today. We want to grow. We want to know you more, Father. So open our eyes. I thank you. Lord, help us to see your word more clearly than we ever have before. May we know who you called us to be. God, I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do me a favor and turn with me uh, to Judges 6. We're, we have been uh, doing the Know the Word all together, and we are in Judges right now. And I always enjoy Judges. Most people do not like the book of Judges. It's full of all kinds of crazy things going on. But I, when I teach youth group uh, years and years ago, I used to love just walking them through judges because they could see the selfishness of our generation. When we do things, when we do only what is right in our own eyes, like we talked about last week, man, it, it leaves us empty and it, and it leaves our world hurting and crashing all around us. And so... We're once again in Judges, and this time we're, we're looking at one of my favorite people because I identify with, uh, with Gideon so well. So turn your Bibles to Judges 6. We're, we're going to be looking at, Judge, uh, at Gideon and his life. The first time we see Gideon, 
we see him, he's standing in a wine press. Now, a wine press was probably just a carved out rock where they would put grapes and you would stomp the grapes and you would end up with uh, enough grape juice to turn into wine. But he was in there crushing grain because what had happened is Israel had once again turned away from God. They had, they had forsaken God. They, have, they had walked away from him. They no longer considered him important in their lives. They started serving other gods. And so the protection that God had on them was gone. And the Midianites were, were this huge, wandering, uh, nomadic people that came through and they would just ransack Israel. They would take all of their grain. They would take all of their animals. And it was like a locust plague, as Scripture would call it, as they would come across and just devour the land. And the Israelites would have to run and hide in the cliffs and in the hills to just be able to survive. And Gideon is one of them. Here he is in a wine press, crushing out uh, the wheat, hiding, timid and afraid. And God, God hears the cry of his people. Once again, if you ever wonder, does God hear me? We hear those psalms all the time. God's not afraid of that question. But he does hear his people. He hears us when we cry out in, in our pain, in our loneliness, in, in these hard and difficult times. God hears you. And he did something about it. So he goes to Gideon, and that's where our story picks up. So again, we're in Judges 6, and we're going to start uh, down in, uh, in verse 11. It says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Ebenezerite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and has given us into the hands of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have, and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, which was one of the weakest in Israel. And he says, and I am the least in my family. What does Gideon think of himself in the beginning of this story? Who is Gideon? If you were able to walk up to Gideon and say, Gideon, who are you? What would his answer have been? I'm, I'm the least of all these. This wasn't just false humility. This was an honest question. He is being flat out honest with the angel that's in front of him. He's saying, who, who am I to go that you would call me mighty warrior? I'm not a mighty warrior. I'm the least in my clan. My clan is the least in Israel. Who am I to do this? You're mistaken. But he also does something before that. He accuses the Lord of abandoning them. He looks and he says, well, where is this Lord? If the Lord really is here with us, like you said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. If the Lord is really here with us, then why are we being abandoned to, to the Midianites? Why are we being so crushed and so oppressed? Where is God? He said, we've heard all the stories about his miraculous wonders and all of those things. Where is he? I love that God doesn't answer him. That God doesn't say, oh, let me explain to you where I am. No, God has been there all along. He doesn't need to answer Gideon. That question came out of Gideon's insecurity. And God does not speak to his insecurity. God does not speak to the lies that are in him. God just continues to speak truth. And so what does he begin to tell him? 
He says, Gideon, this is who you are. When he first meets Gideon, he says, Gideon, this is who you are. You are a mighty warrior, and God is with you. That is all that Gideon needed to know. That's all. But in our insecurities, when we feel insecure, most of the insecurities that we have, actually I would say all of the insecurities that we have, come because we don't know who we are. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Who are you? Who are you? As you sit here and you listen to this this sermon, if someone were to come up to you and say, who are you? How would you describe yourself? How would you identify yourself? Who would you say that you are? What would you begin with? Would you begin with all of your insecurities? A lot of us do. Do we begin with something else that we identify with? Well, I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I'm a pastor. I'm a this. I'm a, I'm a that. That this is what's going to tell me who I am. Because right now, Gideon, the only thing he has to tell him who he is, is his history, who he was, who he was born into, and the circumstances that are around him. He is a weak meaningless person. He's treading out wheat, just trying to survive. He's treading it out in a, in a wine press. He doesn't even, he doesn't know who he is. He, all he knows is that he's just trying to survive. And so in that insecurity, as he's just trying to survive, when the Lord comes to him and says, no, the Lord is with you, who does he first blame for the mess that he is in? He looks and says, well, where is he? Well, Gideon, you hadn't been looking for God at all during this time. Because had you, you would know that your God is always with you. So my question is for you the same thing. Do you have a tendency, and in this pandemic, and in these, these incredible times, and now this incredible heat wave, all of this stuff that's just weighing in on us. Have you turned and accused God and said, God, where are you? If you have, that's more of a question about your insecurity than about who God is. Because God has always used hard times. He's always redeemed the impossible times in our lives to make us incredibly strong. So who are you? Some of you, you define yourself as a victim. You define yourself by what other people have done. Some of you define yourself by what other people say that you are. Some of you define yourself by your parents, like, like Gideon is doing. Some of you define yourself by your failures. Some of you by what you view as success. But I will tell you, you do not know who you are if you do not know who God is. Only in the shadow of God's wings will you know who you are. That is the sole purpose of this message today. That you cannot know who you are unless you are tucked up underneath God and you allow Him to start telling you who you are. And if you don't know who you are, then you are filled with insecurity. And you are a blind person walking around a room trying to figure life out. And it's lonely and it's filled with hurt and pain as you bump into everything around you. Gideon. Gideon is called by God as a mighty warrior. He doesn't look like a mighty warrior, does he? He's hiding. He's afraid. He's, he's, he's the least of his tribe. He's the least of all of the people that he knows. He doesn't know anybody. He doesn't know anything. I'm not a warrior. I don't, I don't have a sword. I'm just crushing grain, and I'm just trying to survive. And God tells him, no, I'm with you. And I love what he says. He says, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands. Am I not sending you? Am I not with you? Go. Your strength, you are a mighty warrior because God has declared you a mighty warrior. 
Now go in that strength, in what God has declared, because he is with you, and go. Does Gideon go right away? No. Because the insecurities and the lies continue to build up, and he's terrified. So the story continues, and, and he tells the Lord to stay for, for a little bit while he goes and, and does what is customary for a visitor. He goes and he brings him some food and, and, and basically an offering. And he brings it to the angel, and he, the angel tells him, put it on the rock. And, and he says, okay. And he puts the food on the rock, and he says, listen, I, if it really is you, you know, I, I want to know. And the angel takes the tip of his staff touches the food, and in smoke, everything is gone. And Gideon is left standing there by himself. He, he knows God has now commanded him to go and to do these things. The next time we see him, God has asked him to tear down the Asherah poles and the Baals. These are the gods that they had. Mostly were all fertility gods. These were the gods that were in the town that, that Gideon was in, that Gideon grew up in. He knew these gods inside and out because that was what was worshipped right where he was. And God said, tear them down and sacrifice your dad's bull on the altar. And sacrifice it to the Lord. But he's still afraid. And so in the middle of the night, he obeys because God is the one that told him to. But he's still afraid. He doesn't see himself for who he is because he doesn't see himself for who God says he is. He still sees himself as, as what he has built all around him and what the circumstances tell him and what all of, all of the people around him tell him. So here he goes. He goes and he tears down the Asherah poles in the middle of the night. He cuts them down and he tears down the altar of Baal and builds an altar to the Lord and burns a sacrifice on it. In the morning, the townspeople were furious. They came after him. They found out who it was and they said, ah, it was Gideon. And so they show up at Gideon's door, banging on the door and they start yelling for him. Come on out here and we're going to kill him. Do you see what he has done to Baal? He needs to answer for this. We already have it hard enough and this is what he's going to do to the gods of our area? Gideon's father comes to the door and does something absolutely amazing. He says, you know what? Instead of me killing my son for this, Baal is the one who has been, who has been offended here. Baal is the one, and, and he is a god. So if he really is a god, let him defend himself. It's his altar that was torn down. Let Baal contend with him. And that's what people called Gideon from that time on. Because in the beginning, they thought Baal was going to come after him, and his life was going to be awful. When they saw that Gideon began to prosper, they began to realize that Baal was no god at all. And so Gideon has, sees what God is beginning to do. Now he knows it's time for him to go and, and to defeat the Midianites. But he wants more security. He wants to really know. So he says, God, God, will you do me a favor? Will you give me a sign? Will you allow the dew on the ground to be, to everything to be wet and, and to have the fleece be dry? If you do that, then I'll know it's you. Remember, this is all this insecurity welling up in him. Insecure because he doesn't know who God is. He doesn't have a relationship with him. And he doesn't trust who God says he is. And so it happens that morning. It's exactly as he had asked. What does he do? He comes back to the Lord and says, ah, I know, I, I, I'm still feeling really insecure. And now if I was God, I would have been like, let's move on. Your dad was pretty cool. Let's use him. But God doesn't because he knows who Gideon is. He knows he's a mighty warrior. And what is God doing? I love this. God is calling the warrior out of him. God is calling who he is out of him. For years, Gideon, this mighty warrior, had settled to be this scared nothing of a man. 
And he believed that he didn't matter, that nothing he did was ever going to matter. And God was calling all that he had made him to be out of Gideon. Why do you think you're any different? God today is calling you out. He created you. He knows who you are. He knows you by name. Not the name you give yourself and not the name your parents gave you, but the name He gave you. He knows who you are. And He's calling that out of you. Are you listening? The only way to know who that is is to tuck yourself up under God, to get to know Him more, to spend time in His Word, to get into the shadow of His wings and to be able to hear His voice. And here, here's Gideon beginning to hear. And God's not afraid to keep showing him. Okay, I get it. You believe you're insecure. You're not insecure. You're a mighty warrior, Gideon. And I am here with you. And so he said, okay, I'll do it the other way. I will make the fleece all wet and the ground perfectly dry. Let's do it that way. In the morning, he wakes up and he wrings out the fleece and there's enough to fill a bowl. And Gideon says, okay, let me lead this army. So he calls an army together. And the first people to gather around him are the people from his town. The ones who had seen the mighty warrior in action as he tore down the Baal. Then the rest of Manasseh began to join. He ended up with 32,000 people behind him to fight this army. Now, 32,000 people may sound like a lot, but it wasn't even a quarter of what Midian already had. It was a, a ratio of one to four Midianites, uh, Israelites to the Midianites. This isn't an army big enough. And so Gideon says, okay, let's, let's get them ready for battle. God says we're going to do this, so, so here we go. And God says, stop. Stop. Something's wrong here. There's too many of you. This isn't a fair fight. He said, do me a favor. Ask anyone who is afraid, who looks at the over 100,000 Midianites and is terrified that they will not be coming home. Tell them to head home. 22,000 of them left. Only leaving him with 10,000. Now Gideon begins to become insecure again. But why? Why did God take away that 32,000? He took away those, those 22,000. He took them away for two reasons. One, so that Israel wouldn't take the credit. And two, because he was calling the mighty warrior. He was calling the name out of Gideon who he had placed in him. So now Gideon looks and he says, 10,000. Okay, God, I don't know what you're doing, but, but here we go. And God says, no, no, there's something wrong. There's still too many. And so he divides them again. Gideon ends up with only 300 men. But here's the amazing thing. Gideon still prepares for the, for the war. He still prepares and begins to get ready. He only has 300 men against over 100,000. Every one of his men is going to have to kill over 450 Midianites. This is impossible. But he continues on with the plan because he's beginning to trust God. Do you see Gideon snuggling up to God, beginning to say, okay, God, if, if you're not in this, I, I can't do this. With 32,000, he was saying, okay, we might be able to do this. But with 300, he's saying, God, you're going to have to take this. That, that was the beginning of Gideon being able to see who God had called him to be. Then, the night before the battle, Gideon is, is still really nervous. God even comes to him, and he, Gideon is not asking for any more fleeces. He's not asking for anything else. God comes to him because he knows the insecurity. He says, listen, take your servant and go stand on the edge of the camp and listen to what you hear. 
So he goes down by the Midian camp. They sneak down and they listen. And he hears one soldier speaking to another. And the one soldier comes and says, Ah, I didn't sleep real well last night. He said, I had this horrible dream. There was this, this big uh, thing, that, this bail that came down and, and ran into the, tent, uh, into the tent of the Midians. And the tent collapsed. <laughs> and the other soldier looks at him and says, I know, that can only be Gideon. <laughs> Gideon hadn't fought anything yet. He had lost 32,000 men. They had all left him. He hadn't fought a fight. What was going on? How in the world did they know about who Gideon was? How did they know in Midian? Why were they terrified of him? Oh, that could only be Gideon. Because God had already began to rebuild a reputation <laughs> and instilling fear in the Midianite army. God was already at work in the Midianites. God was already at work. He was well ahead of everything that Gideon was going to do. And you know what this did? It encouraged Gideon. All of his doubt, all of his insecurity, and what was God's response to all of that? Encouragement. Why? Because God wanted his child to know his name. God wanted his child to know who he created him to be. That he didn't create him as a timid, fearful, meaningless man. And you know, God didn't create you that way either. God didn't create you to not matter. I know so many of you are sitting there, especially during this pandemic, especially during all the things that are going on, and you're sitting there thinking, do I even matter? Yes, yes, you do. You matter completely. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for you. God loved you so much that he saved you. This is the God that we serve. And you know what God wants? He wants you to know your name. He doesn't want you living in insecurity. He doesn't want you living in fear. He doesn't want you living as somebody who doesn't matter. I don't want that for any of my children. I look at my children and whenever they feel that way, I just want to grab them and say, listen, no, you do matter. This is who you are. Parents, you have an incredible opportunity in, in the lives of your kids now to begin to teach them who God made them to be. We have an opportunity to listen carefully to what God is saying. And I know you're sitting there on the couch. I'm not some mighty warrior. No, not all of us are. Not all of us are a Gideon who are going to go lead people into a battle and to win these crazy battles. But, but God created some of you to be gentleness. God created some of you to be kindness. God created some of you to be generous. God created some of you to be leaders and some of you to be prayer warriors, to be intercessors. Some of you he gave to be evangelists. He has called all of us to be all kinds of different things. And only God knows your name. How do I learn who God called me to be? I better spend some time with him. I better learn to start trusting him, start listening to him, start spending time in his word and seeing where he calls me, who I am. One of the best places to start is in the fruits of the Spirit. Look to see in those fruits which ones, because all those fruits should be evident in your life, but which ones of those fruits is God calling out of you the most? Which one is he saying, no, I'm going to bring peace to other people's lives through you. I'm going to bring, bring people to me through your kindness, your encouragement, your love, and your compassion. What, what is God calling out of you today? Some of you are sitting there saying, I don't know, because I don't matter. Well, that's because you're still living in your insecurities. Let's join with the psalmists and say in Psalm 91 that God is our refuge and our strength. 
that He is our safe place. And if we tuck up underneath Him in the shadow of His wings, that's, that's where you will know who you are as you become to know who He is. God is calling you. He is calling your name. He knows you. He created you. Are you listening to Him? Are you listening to the lies and the fears and all of the things that are around you? What is God calling out of you this morning? Maybe take a few minutes and pray and ask Him, God, what are you calling out of me? What is the name that you have given me that you are, are trying to show me, but I'm too scared and I'm too, too busy with all the craziness around me to listen? God, is an amazing God who loves his children. And he loves you. If any of you are sitting there saying, I don't matter, he doesn't care for me, you're wrong. You are not what you feel. You are not who you were. You are not all of the things that have happened to you. You are not the circumstances that are around you. You are who he says you are. Let's, like Gideon, pull up underneath him and learn to trust him, that we might be able to hear him, that we might be able to know who he has called us to be. Our God is an awesome God. He's an incredible father who loves his children and is calling amazing things out of you. Are you ready and willing to listen? Spend some time with him this week. Get in his word. Look and listen. And tuck yourself up underneath him. That's the God we serve. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, you created us so you know us. Lord, but we spend so much time telling you how worthless we are. God, you know who we are. God, I thank you that you did not argue with Gideon. But Lord, you just kept calling him. You kept showing him. And Lord, you weren't afraid of his insecurities, but you dove into those insecurities and you encouraged him. Father, I pray that you, you would begin to encourage the, each one of us. Father, I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for this week. I thank you for all that we have ahead of us. Lord, it's so hard sometimes when we're looking at all that's going on in this pandemic and all that we don't have to see the one thing that we truly do, and that's you. So, Lord, with all of these distractions put aside for now, Lord, will you come? Will you tell us who we are? Will you show us that we are your children? Will you show us how valuable we are to you? Will you show us who you've made us to be? the unique person that you have made each one of us, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that, Lord, you knit us together in our mother's womb. God, you know us. Will you help us? Help us to see who you see us. And, Father, I pray for those who don't know you. It is impossible to know who we are if we don't know the Creator who made us. So, Lord, I ask that you you would draw us closer to you, that we might know you. I thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you for your word. We praise you for your son. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful week.